So today we're gonna take a look at my brand new 2022 M1 iPad Air 5. Yes, an iPad Air with an M1 chip inside. I think Apple is really getting everything with M1 chips inside and I'm here for it. Not only did I get the iPad Air, but I got the Smart Folio keyboard alongside some other accessories. The Apple Pencil, of course. And since the iPad Air 5 has support for the Magic Keyboard, I decided to pick one up in white. I'm also feeling a little bit generous today, since you guys have been killing it in the comment section. Here's $25 Apple gift card for anyone that's quick to get this. Let me know who won down below in the comments. Thank me later. So as you guys can probably tell by now, this is going to be a very chill and calm video of me unboxing the brand new iPad Air. The iPad Air comes in 5 new colors, but I settled up on the blue one. Also, I went with 256 gigs of storage. I think it's the closest thing you could get in terms of value compared to the M1 iPad Pro, and I have no regrets. I've been debating on what's better, should I just spend the extra 250 on the base model 128GB iPad Pro or just to use that extra money for storage and accessories. I think saving that extra money made sense since the iPad Air has that M1 chip inside so it's not lacking performance. Oh, this new blue color looks amazing. I've never seen Apple went with such a deep color before with the iPads and I love it. Of course inside the box we also get the familiar faces the manual, the 20 watt USB-C power adapter, and also the USB-C to USB-C charger. The iPad Air has Thunderbolt support as well, so it could attach like an external SSD and the speeds are very fast. And again, just admiring the blue on this iPad, I think I definitely made the right choice. The setup process on the iPad is always a breeze, especially if you're coming from an older iPad, you could just grab it. The one I'll be using is my iPad mini because I really love the layout. So all you have to do is just use the camera, you scan this globe or thing that Apple uses and you're good to go. Another thing I wanted to set up was the Touch ID sensor which is placed on the power button. It took me around 2 minutes to get everything set up, I added my second fingerprint and now everything will be restored from the iCloud. Meanwhile that's happening, let's take a look at our first accessory, which is the Apple Pencil. Apple technically only makes two cases for the iPads, the Smart Folio and the Magic Keyboard. The Smart Folio case is pretty basic and Apple has been making them for years. It has magnets to keep the iPad closed and also a very soft inner lining. You can also fold it up into different positions based on what you're doing, either drawing or just consuming content. The Magic Keyboard on the other hand is way more functional and yes, it's a bit expensive at $299 for the 11 inch version, but to me it's worth every penny. The iPad just magically snaps on to the keyboard and from there it's connected. You get a laptop like experience with a very smooth trackpad and a solid keyboard. The keys are also backlit and I have no issues typing in the dark. The best thing now about the iPad Air is that it's basically like an iPad Pro without all the fancy features. So no 120Hz ProMotion XDR display, no LiDAR scanner or Face ID. But we do have that powerful M1 chip inside which gave me a 1714 single core score on Geekbench and also a 7292 multi score. Listen, that's the same M1 chip that's inside my older M1 MacBook, so the possibilities are endless. 
And don't forget, there's also a beautiful 10.9 inch liquid retina display that makes anything you do on the iPad looks good, whether that's diving into documents, watching videos, or just browsing your favorite websites. For me, that's Squarespace, which is today's sponsor. If you were ever interested in building your own website, whether that's for a brand, a blog, your own portfolio, or even just a place to sell your own merchandise, Squarespace is the perfect place to do that. I love Squarespace because it's very easy to use. The fact that you could create a full-blown website without learning how to code is a life changer. So if you guys are interested, click the first link down below in the description. Go to www.squarespace.com backslash Siobhan Salmon to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. But yeah, the iPad Air, man, is packed with features that anyone would love, from content creators to students to gamers or even teachers, and to all those people that think they could draw better than me. Taking notes on the iPad Air is also flawless as well. I love that they added center stage, which utilizes the 12 megapixel wide front camera, so whenever I'm on a video call, I could enable center stage to track my movement to ensure that I'm always the center of attention. There's also a 12 megapixel rear camera, and it's pretty decent. This is what it looks like. I don't know nobody that's gonna take selfies outside with the they iPad, but if you do, I don't know what's wrong with you, <laughs> but this is how the video call to looks. The iPad Air 5 is also perfect for travel. I can see myself using this to get work done on the train, at the coffee shop, at the park, or just even on the go in general. I personally always love having my iPad on me just so I could sign documents or even just edit pictures on the fly. That's something I enjoy doing in my spare time. I still feel like the iPad is being held back because with a chip as powerful as the M1 inside right now, I wish I could have at least some form of Final Cut on here to edit videos or just to have like a desktop mode on the iPad. I think that would be sick. But for now, in my eyes, it's almost like putting a jet engine on a scooter. To me personally, where the iPad really shines is doing things that you can't really do on other devices. Taking notes, drawing on the iPad has to be one of the best feelings ever. There's tons of note taking apps that are perfectly optimized for the iPad and it results in a very good experience. My only issue is the pricing. The iPad Air costs $599, which is very affordable, but you only get 64 gigs. And who really wants an M1 iPad with 64 gigs of storage? If you're going to get the 256 gig, now the price is up to $749, which is basically the same price of a 128 gig iPad Pro. So it's kind of hard to recommend the iPad Air unless you don't care about storage. Aside from that, it's one of the best Apple products you could purchase and I'm really happy with mine, especially since I have the cellular version. 